Hey everybody, it's Jordan with PDQ.com, and I'm being punished, so they put me on the Mac. Uh, we're back to talk about Patch Tuesday, and this one's confusing and bad. The confusing part is I can't find any uniform agreement on the number of patches to be closed. I have 81 in here. I've seen 74. The disagreement seems to come from there is a exploit within Git that VS Code can interact with. So whether you count that one as Microsoft or not is up to you. I'm keeping 81. There's nine critical patches, but the problem is there are four 9.8 critical patches and each one is terrible. Uh, we're going to start with the first one, which I'm doing this one first because this one's already exploited out in the wild. And it is an elevation of privilege for Microsoft Outlook. And normally you see a 9.8 with Microsoft Outlook. It's like, oh, it's because it accesses the preview pane. We can just disable that. No. Now this one logs in before, ac activates before the preview pane, which is why it's so, so dangerous. There's a couple of mitigating factors you can do on this one. As soon as I can figure out how to scroll down on a Mac, you'd think there'd be some like handy bar or something, but there's not. i just hit the down arrow. All right, <clears throat> so this one is you can either block TCP outbound, uh, 445, or and there's another one is to use the protected user security group, which prevents authentication with NTLM. Those are kind of mitigation, or you can install the patch, and that can do it. But that one's a bad one. That's a 9.8. It requires no user interaction. It doesn't require any sort of uh, privilege or access, and it can be done remotely. And it works before preview pane. So that one is pretty terrible, but stick with me. It gets worse. So the next one, this is another 9.8. That's going to be a common theme for the four we're covering here, and it is for the Internet Control Message Protocol. Uh, this one, same thing, network attack vector, doesn't require user interaction. It's got low complexity, and it does not require any sort of permissions. Uh, this is the same thing where it's kind of a, I don't know, low-level fragmented IP packet. Uh, the reason this one's probably not a 10 is it requires the application to be tied to a raw socket. Uh, that means that the socket gives access to the transport information of that one. So if none of your applications use raw sockets, you're fine. Uh, I don't know which applications use raw sockets, so I'm just going to assume I'm not fine just because of the threat of that one. Uh, continue down the trail of nightmares. Uh, this one is an RPC protocol, also 9.8, same thing, network, n low complexity, no authentication. User doesn't need to do anything. Uh, since this one is RCP, they do say you can block port 135 on your perimeter firewall, and that should keep you mostly secure, S still patch, but I'm going to assume for most of you, 135 is blocked in some manner on the perimeter firewall already, but if not, uh, chop chop, that's, that's another really bad one. And uh, don't worry, this is the last horrific patch that we have for this month, it's another 9.8. Uh, it uses the HTTP protocol stack, it's got all the same... All the same information, no user interaction, no permissions needed. All these things, they all sound wormable to me based on the definition. They're not wormable because there's all like a single mitigating factor. In this case, it uses HTTP-3 as well as, I'm going to have to go and look it up with something IO. Scroll down here. Boy, I don't like Max. Uh, buffered IO. Uh, the reason why this one is probably not considered as bad is because HTTP-3 uh, or slash 3 is not on by default. You have to set a registry key, so it's one of those you have to have enabled a certain setting for this to be a real threat. But either way, all four of those are bad. If you had one of those that were risk for you, you're in for a bad month. Having all four of those is, is pretty horrific, and we can't even decide how many total patches there are to begin with. Uh, boy. I guess we'll end on a positive note. It, it's pie day. Go go grab pie or pizza. But uh, with stuff this bad, the best thing you can do is automate this process so your patching begins before you are really concerned about it, before you know how terrible it is. It's already fixing itself. Maybe hit your lab first, but I'm not gonna tell you how to do your job. If you're looking to automate, I'd use PDQ Deploy and PDQ Inventory. I like those products a lot. Uh, for PDQ.com, I'm Jordan.